We've owned and camped in both a camper shell and a slide-in truck camper, and we loved both. If you're not sure which one would work best for you, stay tuned. We're gonna break down the differences between the two and let you know if the camper is really worth the extra money. And you might be surprised at the results. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Where we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. A brief background on our camping history. We backpacked and tented out of our car for many years before building a custom bed with drawers for our Ram pickup truck. After using this setup for five years, we recently upgraded to a Lance 650 slide-in truck camper. I would like to add that prior to tent camping, I was in the army and have slept on the back of Humvees in the desert. And I have gone to the bathroom in the most unimaginable places on planet Earth. So anything since then is an absolute upgrade for me. And so with that, let's pit these two against each other. We're gonna keep score. Let us know in the comments what your final score is. Our Lance 650, the smallest and cheapest of the slide-in campers they make, cost us $32,000 and could cost you anywhere from $27,000 to 34,000, depending on the extra options. And that's before any potential upgrades you make to your truck. Our camper shell, the ARE MX series, on the other hand, cost us $2,600 installed. Add in the cost of the wood to make our custom bed drawers, plus other accessories like a custom sized mattress, and let's say this setup cost us $4,000 total. This is a no brainer. From a cost perspective, this round definitely goes to the camper shell. Okay, so now we're getting to the juicy, the stinky stuff, because this is where the extra money for the camper makes a little more sense. With our camper shell, we often paid for truck stop showers. So worth it, they are divine. Or we used often lukewarm and dirty coin operated or free showers at campgrounds. Or we used our own portable hot off-grid shower system, which we made a video about. It consists of a pop-up tent and water heated on a cook stove, plus a collapsible bucket and a USB shower head. When the barbarians were at the gate, we used public bathrooms or a five gallon bucket with a toilet seat and peat moss, either in the tent or in the cab of our truck. Now in our camper, we just drop bombs like we have an endless defense budget in total privacy and near silence. Enjoy the ventilation fan and can clean up nicely afterwards with a sink with actual running water and soap. We can also take a shower with temperature controlled water, hang our towels to dry on a rod, have a sink to brush our teeth in, and check our egos in the mirror. We don't even have to worry about headlamps casting um, unfortunate silhouettes in our shower tent. Oh, and we also have an outdoor shower. In our opinion, this round is definitely for the truck camper. Your relaxation space with a camper shell is the bed area, the front cab area in the truck, and in our case, an awning we installed to hang out underneath. But who wants to feel like they're still driving or sleeping all the time? And what if you fart in the shell? Where can the other person go to escape your microscopic fecal matter? We did this for years, but with our new truck camper, we can chill out on the bed, in the dinette area, actually stand up and walk around, do not underestimate how cool this is, people. Or we can hang out outside under either of the rear or side awnings. For this one, it's the truck camper. In our camper shell, our preference was to stay overnight in truck stops, like Love's and Flying J Centers. We love these because most encourage overnight parking, and you're welcome whether you're a car camper, RVer, long haul trucker, or just a dude who needs to get a couple hours sleep in your back seat. We'd pull in, find a spot out of the way, set up our curtains, take a long, hot, relaxing $12 shower, hop in the back, put in the earplugs, and after a night's rest, we'd fill up with gas in the morning, and then get our caffeine fix and breakfast. 
So we rarely parked in a residential area, except I know that Magellan did one time when he was in downtown Houston, but we do know that it's something that people do in a pinch. Oh, and we did once have a booking hiccup at a popular campground, and we did sleep stealthily in our truck on that one. Yeah, with this truck camper, dead giveaway. Don't try pulling this sucker into a Walmart parking lot with no overnight parking signs and think you won't get the knock. The stealth round definitely goes to the camper shell. When we cooked out of our camping shell, we needed to pull out the table, set up the cook stove, grab stuff out of the drawers, let in all the mosquitoes, cook our meal, and haul water for washing and cleaning up. Although we have a canopy, this process especially sucks in the winter, in the dark, on chilly windy evenings, or in the rain. When we didn't have the table, we did this off of the tailgate, which meant we had to get everything we needed out of the drawers first. With a truck camper, we just turn on the burners, chop up whatever we need on our cutting board on this gloriously large dinette table, or reheat something in the microwave that is sitting in our nearby refrigerator and pull out our plates and forks and knives with ease. Oh, and our running water. It's basically like cooking at home. This round definitely goes to the truck camper. While we're on the subject of cooking, let's talk about eating. It's nice to eat outside. We do it all the time, at home on our backyard patio, at restaurants and outdoor dining, picnic tables and campgrounds, on mountain summits, and along rivers. But once bad weather sets in, or those awful bite through your clothes mosquitoes arrive, it's nice to be able to go inside and eat in peace. With the truck camper, there's really no worry with that. We go inside and eat at our dinette, and whisper horrible vengeance into the ears of those bloodthirsty insects outside the window. I don't think they can hear me, dude. Oh, they can hear me. Because I whisper. Like this. But eating inside the camper shell? We decided to never eat where we slept because of how disastrous that could be. Also, some people are crumb spewing, sauce dripping mammals. So we made a rule to always eat in the front cab of the truck, which makes you feel constrained and like you're still driving. So another round to the truck camper. Driving a pickup truck with a shell for us is no different than driving a car, but driving a truck with a sliding camper is a little more complicated. Your visibility is a little more limited, even with a backup camera screen to see vehicles behind you. You need to brake sooner because of your weight, especially down hills. You need to take turns even slower than you normally would. You need, and should always anyways, drive more carefully in bad weather, whether it's rain or heavy wind. You don't really have to worry about that so much with a camper shell because it's not nearly the same weight and you can still see out the back. So this round goes to the camper shell. In a camper shell, controlling the temperature is pretty difficult. If it was cold, like negative 19 in Minnesota during a snowstorm, frozen balls cold, we could use electric blankets, winter sleeping bags, and multiple comforters. If it was hot, we'd use a portable oscillating fan or a swamp cooler. But none of that is foolproof and rain was never really our friend. We only had a few tiny leaks in the shell, but this is a pretty common issue for shell owners. The rain also creates a disgusting amount of humidity back there. It's not a big deal to suck it up at night and try to sleep in bad weather. But what if it's 3 p.m.? Would we sit in the front cab, truck on with the heat or AC turned on? Would we just be lying down in the back in the middle of the day just because it's raining? With the truck camper, we have air conditioning to take care of the cooling and humidity, a furnace, and much better ventilation. It's a no-brainer, and that's why it easily wins this round. When we first built our truck bed drawers, we tried to fit our guest bedroom queen-size mattress on top. It was a few inches too long, so we wound up getting a custom-sized mattress slightly shorter than a queen. 
the Lance Truck Camper has a true queen-size mattress. Our feet can even hang off of the bed if need be. While we can sit up in both, the overhead in the camper is even higher than the camper shell. There's some nightstand-esque storage too. It all just feels more spacious and cozy, and we've definitely slept well in it. Round again to the truck camper. Speaking of feeling more spacious, while we have more standing, sitting, and sleeping space in the truck camper, there's quite a few things we don't have anymore. For one, we can't carry our two 17-foot sea kayaks on top or our other roof items since we got the smallest truck camper. And our bikes are still MIA since we're still figuring out our stair and swinging bike rack solution. With the truck camper, our storage is spread out all over instead of our two large drawers in the camper shell. These storage areas are oddly shaped, or too small, and things we had no issue storing in our old setup, our camp table for instance, are now trickier. Funny enough, there seems to be less storage in the camper than our old setup, although we have reclaimed our back seat in the cab from the 65 quart Pelican cooler we used as a refrigerator. This round goes to the camper shell. While we're talking about refrigeration, our Pelican cooler we use in our camper shell setup, when properly packed and fitted with ice and restaurant pans, could go a week without an ice refill. It was nice to be able to grab a seltzer or a block of sharp cheddar for cheese and crackers without having to stop. That all being said, it was precariously packed and sometimes things got wet that we totally didn't want to get wet from the sometimes violent sloshing while driving. It had to be drained every so often and it didn't have a freezer. And, well, our truck camper has a freezer. Freezers mean ice cream. Ice cream means ice cream. So this round has to go to the truck camper. With great power comes even greater responsibility. With the truck camper, we're always monitoring our various tanks. Do we need to fill our freshwater tank? Do we need to empty our gray and black tanks at the dump station because of Magellan's love of tacos? Do we have enough propane for heat to ignite the stove or keep the refrigerator going? Will these solar batteries get charged enough in this crummy overcast weather? Are we ready to winterize this thing to protect the pipes? And will the pipes freeze? With the camper cell, other than making sure our electric blankets or oscillating fan was plugged in and not draining the truck battery too much, we really didn't have to do too much of anything. This round goes to the camper shell. With a camper shell, it is entirely feasible to roll up into a campground, take your shoes off, and immediately hibernate. The next day, it could be as easy as waking up and just driving off. With a truck camper, you could do that, but most likely you're going to be enjoying your extras and so you need time to plug unplug your 30 amp or 50 amp electric, to set up or pack up your generator, connect or disconnect your water and sewer hoses, use the dump station, etc. If you're looking to roll in or out fast, this round has to go to the camper shell. As overlanders well know, you can take your truck rig nearly anywhere, but with a slide-in truck camper on top, complicated and probably not. We've taken the camper shell places where we will not and will never take the truck camper. Yes, we can unload it at a campground and go off-roading, but what if we're not near a campground or have no place to offload the camper? While we've seen slide-ins left on the side of the road at trailheads, that's not ideal, so this round has to go to the camper shell. Okay, final round guys. At this point, the truck camper and the camper shell are tied for us. And that is probably the reason why we waited so long to upgrade. Zeus, our deer-legged dog and sometimes cat, was one of the biggest reasons we bought this Land 650 truck camper because you simply can't keep your pet in a vehicle. But with AC and heat, the camper allows us to leave him safe and secure while we tackle some of the more difficult hikes and paddles. And for all the shorter trails, outdoor restaurants, 
epic overlooks, rest stops, and dog-friendly breweries, he can come with us. I am not going to lie, but one of the reasons why we haven't taken longer road trips is because I miss this sucker so much. So I'm very excited that we are going to be able to take him on all of our road trips, including our upcoming road trip to the Grand Canyon. So stay tuned for those videos. Our camper shell could have been better in every category, and we'd still have bought the truck camper because of him. That said, we know that pets are not going to be the reason for everyone to get a truck camper, but we hope that us going through all of these categories are going to help you decide what's most important to you. So for example, stealth was really not a big deal to us, but we know it's important for people in urban areas living out of their truck. For us, a shower and a bathroom were a big deal because we are insanely active and we camp in remote areas often. If you're an urban camper with a Planet Fitness membership, you obviously don't need your own shower. And if you don't have pets, pets shouldn't be a factor for you. And I think it's safe to say that not every category is weighted the same. So what kind of camping setup do you have and what made you choose it? Let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we hope we showed enough of the pros and cons so that you can decide for yourself. If this video helped you out, like it and subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter to get updated on our wanderings. We'll see you on the trails or in the water.